He just picked all the boxes. All of the boxes are picked. Oh, she guarded it. I apologize for nothing, you big evil bitch. Ah, wait! Welcome to my first YouTube video! Woo! I'm super hyped. Today we're gonna be playing Ikimen Vampire. Without further ado, let's just get started. Like, I'm ready to play. Alright, here we go. Paris, France. Modern day. The Musée de Louvre, sparkling with dappling light. <laughs> Reading! Okay. The Musée de Louvre, sparkling with dappled light, reflected from Pei's pyramid, was breathtaking. The museum itself is a work of art. I'm already loving these backgrounds. Pictures do not do it justice. I was a travel agent from Tokyo and a travel blogger on the side. I loved to travel. The food, the languages, the architecture, the food. Paris has been my dream trip and how could I miss seeing the Louvre? I've been wanting to focus more on my blog. Two hours at the Louvre, which you have to see. This could be the article that does it. I gave my traveling companion and mascot, Mousette, a winged fuzzball dangling from my purse, a little tug, and joined the queue. The Dinan wing, containing Jacques-Louis David's The Coronation of Napoleon. I opened my phone app to double check my location, only to be bumped by someone from a large tour group. Excuse me, I mean, pardon. They smiled sheepishly and responded in kind, Swiss by their accent. Continuing onward, I found the coronation. I'm just, I'm loving these backgrounds. <laughs> okay, focus more, focus. Continuing onward, I found the coronation. It was so large, I thought I could step through it into another world. It takes up the whole wall. Who is this? Oh, is he talking to me? He spoke French like a native. His outfit, finished with a long beige overcoat, suggested wealth and class. He looks like a man out of time, as if he steps out of one of these paintings. I mean, like, look at the fit though. Like, the coat is billowing. Like, okay. <laughs> the smartly dressed gentleman turned on his leather oxfords and drew close, peering at me. Pardon, monsieur? I wasn't an object in the museum to be examined. <laughs> she was like, okay, what are you looking at? Then the gentleman uncurled his hand so I could see what he held. I knew it. This earring belongs to you. Oh, when did I lose it? I touched my ears. One of my studs was missing. Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> like, I would be out somewhere and then get home and be like, when did it fall out of my ear? And how long was I out and people noticed I had one earring in? Okay. I believe it was when that patron bumped into you. I happened to spot it as it fell. I was looking for the chance to return it to you. Thank you very much. I'm still suspicious. My bow was instinctual. When I looked up, I caught his eyes, the color of spun gold. I'd never seen anything like them. It's a shame there's no mirror here to help you put it back on. I'm sure there's a restroom nearby. Shall I help you restore it to its proper place? That way you won't lose it again? No, don't touch me, we just met. I had accepted the intimate offer before I realized what I was doing. It wasn't just his eyes. Had his old world noble manner enchanted me? If you would hold still, mademoiselle. The gentleman brushed my hair back with fingers that could have belonged to one of the graceful sculptures around me. I know we're in Paris, but this is too amorous an act to be coming from a stranger. Right? I'm like, dude, we just met. Mm -mm. <laughs> now he's sniffing me. Wait a second. <laughs> Thank you. I got that perfume here in Paris. Stay home. Run! His voice was soft and rich, yet I couldn't place his accent. It was like a melange of hundreds of different lands. There, I believe your earring is secured. The gentleman stepped away with a perfectly natural smile. Whatever spell I imagined myself to be under was broken. Run, girl! My rogue earring is certain to behave itself now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He out here trying to flirt. Not falling for it. Mm -hmm. Bye. The gentleman left me heading down the gallery toward the Mona Lisa. I assumed. I was completely swept away by his charm. His tailored three-piece suit was modern, but he wore it like a turn-of-the-century prince. 
or a vampire from a gothic romance novel. I can't believe I just thought that. Okay, fending off further fanciful notions, I checked my cell phone. It's been an hour and a half? Where did the time go? I guess I should rethink my article. I should at least see the Mona Lisa while I'm here. This can be my last stop. I hurried down the same corridor the gentleman had taken. That's such a fancy looking door. Like, I'm loving the architecture. Okay. Is this some kind of exhibit? The wood was old and intricately carved. It could have been a work of art itself. I don't think this was on the map. What's behind it? Maybe a staff room? But there were no signs, no stanchions squirting it off, and it stood partly open. I could see through the gap there were clocks, vases, and paintings inside. It could be a new exhibit or an old one. The hallway smelled of time forgotten. I love that sentence. My hand was already on the door handle. I'll just see what's in here. Maybe even write about the hidden treasures of the Louvre. Girl, it is not an exhibit. If there's no signs, I don't go place it. That's how you get in trouble. Say, now we in here and it's dark. Unlike the rest of the museum, thus this hallway was narrow, barely wide enough for two people. The exhibits had no labels, no descriptions of any kind. I think I've wandered into a storage area. Run! Okay. <laughs> but instead of turning around, I found myself drawn further in. It was like I was in a dream. My feet were moving without me, walking toward a light at the end of the long, long hallway. Is that the exit? I began to run, running just so I could get out of this place. Good idea, now you want to run. A force took hold of me before I reached the light. I gasped, fought, and broke free. Ah! <laughs> the light flared, enveloping everything. I squeezed my eyes shut. It didn't help. I kept them tight until the last, until the light returned to normal. When I opened them... Okay, so the music just changed dramatically, and I hate when that happens. Where am I? It was a different hallway. Impossible! These hallways can't be connected. But they have to be, don't they? Bedroom doors on one side, windows on the other. It looked like a private mansion. It's bright because of the chandelier, but strangely, it feels like night. I pushed aside a floor-length crimson curtain. Innumerable stars flecked the midnight blue sky like paint flecks on a canvas, a portrait of a laughing crescent moon. How can it be night? What time is it? I pulled out my cell phone. 2.20 p.m. exactly. That can't be. I checked my cell phone again. 2.21. Then the window. Clouds passed over the moon. There's an explanation for this. There has to be. We're dreaming! We'll wake up! I'm telling you! Okay. My head was spinning. I took a deep breath to calm myself. It helped. A little. I'll retrace my steps. That's it. But when I turned around, everything was white. My world was gone. If I thought my head was spinning before. What's going on? Okay, look, I don't like this <laughs> at all. This is why you don't go places you're not supposed to go, girl. A rush of air. Someone was behind me. It was a shadow. It grabbed me by the arm and enveloped me like a dark embrace. Okay, we're dead. It's fine. It's totally fine. Let go! I fought the shadow's hold, but nothing I did could budge it. Fingers slid down my neck, pushed my hair aside, and stomped at my throat. Girl, fight! Run! Let me have a drink. No! Stop! I was back in the hallway, alone, standing exactly where I'd been a second ago. If you don't start running, girl, was any of that real? Just a waking dream. Okay. My pulse was racing. I wanted out of this place. Back to the musée. Back to my hotel. Back to Japan. The door! Turning around, I saw to my relief the same door I'd entered in the Louvre. Oh, thank God. I placed my hand upon the cold handle and pulled. Nothing. I pushed. Nothing. Come on, open! I put my shoulder into it. Nothing. Oh god, we're stuck here! No matter what I did, it wouldn't move. RUN! Who's there? It was a man with jet black hair. Tips as silver as the stars outside. I'm loving the descriptions in this game. Also, he's cute. The coat's a bit extra, but... And is that a sword? We need to get out of here. He spoke to me in French, albeit with a thick accent. Not quite Italian. Something about his mien recalled my nightmare to me, but there wasn't anything frightening about him yet. Oh, the sword, actually, so come on now. And he's dressed in costume? 
Maybe he's part of a show the Louvre is putting on. Maybe he's not. Okay, at this point, I don't care who he is. I'm glad to have found someone. Pardon, do you know how to open this door? I'm trying to get back to the musée. What do you mean you're confused by me asking about getting back? What do you mean? Okay. That's exactly what I did. I came through the hallway, the one with all the antiques. He took stock of me. He didn't seem to doubt my story, only his own eyes. What do you mean, what am I? <laughs> From down the hall, I heard the soft click of the heels of fine Oxford shoes. Could it be the gentleman I met? I could use a familiar face right now and more help getting this door to open. Excuse me. The dark-haired man clapped a hand over my mouth and swept me into his arms. Excuse me, sir. What is he doing? He pulled me behind the long curtains, hiding us, his back flat against the wall. Is he hiding me? Or himself? I trembled in his arms, but he held me gently. Okay, uh, how am I supposed to believe you? Half shadowed, half illuminated in the moonlight, he was a living painting in chiaroscuro. His features were all contrast, slender face with a firm jaw, sharp tufts of hair that looked soft as silk, eyes of bright jade that met mine without shying away, powerful eyes, earnest eyes. This girl is in a romance novel every second of her day. Eyes that made me trust him. I still don't know what's going on here, but he's not lying to me. I nodded and he uncovered my mouth. What are we hiding from? The man coming down the hallway? Why? After a moment, the dark-haired man spoke. Who? He was right. I couldn't hear the footsteps anymore. Okay. We stepped out from the curtain. He took my hand, his grip firm, and began walking. Escape? What exactly is this place that I need to escape from it? What happens here? Oh god, I'm so nervous for her. I would be lying if I said I wasn't afraid. Sure, I just met you, but let's go. There was one thing in this man here I wasn't afraid of. Him. Girl, you just met him! How are you not afraid of- Okay. He's done nothing but try and help me. That's how they get you! I held his hand tight. If someone could get me out of this, I thought. It would be him. RUN! The door ahead of us opened and a man stepped out. He struck a casual pose, stuffing his hands in his pockets. My savior clicked his tongue. I knew what that sound implied. We'd been caught. Flee! Yeah, we're getting out of here. Fight him! Nah! <laughs> okay, uh, he just called me scrumptious. And I know the main character doesn't know they're vampires yet, but I know. So run, girl, run! He'd block off our exit in the smoothest of fashions, and his eyes fastened on me with obvious fascination. Scrumptious, am I? He's British, isn't he? Although he's got a bit of a brogue. Ah, maybe you fancy me too, judging by the way you're looking me over. Pass! He's also a rotten flirt. <laughs> he ran his tongue over his lips in a very purposeful gesture. Oh god, okay, I like a flirt character, but no. It had to be you. My savior interposed himself between me and the colorful flirt. Elsewhere in the mansion. Okay, so, dim point of view. The gentleman from Paris settled into a chair from his private suite. His gaze into a candle lantern. He gazed into a candle lantern as it were but a window. Yeah. Sebastian. Okay, so it's the dude from before. Hi. Okay, butler character, I'm guessing. The butler, Sebastian, finished setting tea for the gentleman and stood attentively. We have an unexpected guest. I want to be sure she receives our best hospitality. What does that mean? See, there is a place for her at the banquet. See, there's a place for her at the... I wonder if I don't want to go! As you wish. Why do you want to help her escape? Let's bring her to the banquet. No. That's not up to me or you. Don't be so stodgy. Who's going to complain if we add a little color to that drab table? They're having a banquet? And he called this place a mansion? What mansion is connected to the Louvre? I had more questions and zero answers. Okay. 
A man dressed in a butler's garb entered the hallway. Uh, I'm not supposed to be here, so I'm, I'm just going to dip. When I didn't move, he fixed his eyes on me. No. Me? I don't belong here. I'm not planning on staying for supper. But the Lord of the Manor is waiting. Is awaiting you. No, why? No. The Lord of the Manor? This really is someone's house. How does he know I'm here? You can ask him yourself at supper. I'm getting no answers until then? Or will you refuse his invitation after so rudely invading his house? I got lost! Okay? But I didn't... I wanted to tell him it was an accident, but I knew that was just an excuse. I'd apparently trespassed onto some noble lord's property. If nothing made sense, the butler's reasoning gave No! No, I got lost. I'm leaving. The lord of the manor can tell me how to get back to the Louvre. I suppose that's not a dumb thought. The best thing to do is to be polite until then, so they don't murder me. The butler sensed my acquiescence. Allow me to escort you. I followed the butler closely, mentally mapping the route we took, just in case. The other two men followed behind me. I can't just run about the place trying doors. That's what got me here. I contemplated my guide. He wore a crisp uniform with spotless white gloves. He's fastidious, no nonsense. His master wanted me to dine with him and sent this one to make sure I did. As we walked, I heard the dainty frolicking keys of a piano. That's pretty. The melody grew louder as we approached a door. Sounds like Wolfie's in a sprightly mood. Wolfie? Is that who's playing the piano? The butler stopped at the door, braced himself for a trial, and rapped three times. Pardon me. Ahem, I know that you are in there. Come join us in the dining room. The piano stopped, cut short. The door opened, revealing a man who remained firmly entrenched on the other side. Jama. He was like, why are you bothering me? He's also very pretty. I'm here for him. It is time for the banquet. The pianist, whose curt voice carried a faint Austrian accent, sighed as if he had been rudely awakened from a beautiful dream. He's like, why are you knocking on the door? He's gorgeous. Yes, yes he is. He stood unmoving, as if the flickering light of the chandeliers was the only life in him. Silvery white hair laced across violet eyes, eyes that narrowed unhappily when they landed on me. Um, I just got here. Why you being mean? My fault. I don't know why I'm here. I'm supposed to be at the museum. Wow, I usually like the mean ones. <laughs> so as much as it's bothering me, I'm also drawn to it. Okay. I changed my mind. It's running. Food. I must have misheard. He slipped- Girl, you didn't miss hearing. Okay, he slipped past me, bending slightly to avoid touching me. This one wasn't interested in clearing up any misunderstandings. Uh, he took the staircase down, his cold voice hanging like notes in the air around us. We followed him. Another figure awaited us at the bottom of the steps. Okay. I knew his voice, which belonged to many countries, and none. It's you! It was the gentleman who'd found my earring back in the Musée de Louvre. I hurried down the steps, stopping short at the sight of those golden eyes. It's really him! Is he the lord of the manor? I certainly thought he was princely. Pardon, do you remember me? We met in the front of the coronation of Napoleon. You picked up my earring. Of course I remember you. He came here by the way of the Louvre, like I did. Good. At this point, I just need to get to the exit, any exit, and call for a ride and forget this ever happened. Before I could ask the gentleman the way out, my dark-haired savior stepped between us. She says she came here through your door. Did you bring her? My door? Just as when he grabbed my hand, he looked like he was protecting me. Oh. I did not. I can give you my oath, if you wish. Her arrival is just as surprising to me. Then how did she get here? What are they talking about? Your door? My arrival? They're not making sense. Okay, look, this is when I start looking for the emergency exits and shit. Okay. It was becoming harder to deny that something was very wrong here. I wanted out more than ever. 
I just need to know where I am first. I tap my cell phone, 2.50 p.m., no signal. You've been very kind, but I really can't stay. I've got an itinerary to keep. Good, keep being polite and back away slowly. We're still in the first arrondissement, yes? Where's, where the Louvre is? That door there, does it lead outside? I asked my questions rapid fire before anyone else got the idea to interrupt me. Hmm, I'm afraid the answers you seek will only confuse you more. Why? This isn't the place for a long discussion, however. Would you join me for dinner? A long discussion? Does that door lead outside? The answer is either yes or no. <laughs> right? She's like, what are you doing? Perhaps he sensed my growing aggravation and he added quickly, tonight's banquet is a rare occasion for us, but afterwards I will answer all your questions, s'il vous plaît. I made it my job to help people plan their vacation adventures. As such, I had done the digging on any number of fancy hotels. The gentleman from Paris's dining room was that of a palace. Warmly lit with chandeliers and candelabras. It's so pretty looking. High-backed wooden chairs framing the massive table. Four men were already seated. There was the beautiful pianist. He seemed to be holding on to his earlier statement. He looked unhappy to be here. <laughs> there were two men sitting together some distance from the pianist. They're like, we don't sit next to him. He's mean. Uh, hello. Loving the outfits. Loving the embroidery and the coats. Okay, look. Focus. But the fits are great. Uh, okay. The dark-haired one was strumming his fingers impatiently on the table. Oh, he seems soft and nice. Well, at least his voice does. Mine brother, okay. Brower, so they're brothers. And Dutch. The pale haired brother had the opposite attitude of his short tempered sibling. Ooh, a short tempered character. I love those. <laughs> okay, let me focus. Are? The nice one's gentle eyes stopped on me. Finally, somebody who's not scary around here or angry. Nice to meet you too. There was salvation in his smile. He looked like the paintings of the angels I had seen in the musée. There he is. There's always that one person who makes everything brighter, which means I'm probably gonna be bored by him. I'm sorry! What? Ooh, okay. He's got nice outfits on too. The fourth man, who had a youthful face, raised his head, finally noticing our arrival. He'd been studying the tablecloth as far as I could see. He got the briefest look at me before returning to the thread counting. Okay. Is he shy? Let's say shy, antisocial, maybe both. He spoke, but I wasn't sure if it was to me as he wouldn't meet my eyes. That voice sounds so familiar. I'm going to have to look up the voice actors. He sounds a little bit like Aoi Shota, who does I and Udabri. Just a little bit, okay. Newt, old boy, you do care. Can you desist calling me that wretched? Newt placed his hands on the table as though to push to his feet. I heard a sharp clap behind me. That will be enough of that, you two. I require good manners at my table. Yes. Put them in their place, okay. <laughs> the gentleman from Paris gave everyone in the room a warning look, cloaked in a smile. Let's be seated. There's a few empty chairs, but we'll have to start the toast without them. A votre sante? The gentleman raised a glass. Okay, I was like, what? A votre sante. The gentleman raised a glass of good golden champagne and a toast to good health. Immediately after, the butler began bringing out the first course. I didn't join the gentleman in his toast. I didn't touch my glass of champagne. Good idea, it could be drugged. It's not that I believed it was poison or drugged. I do, though I was certainly wary. I didn't feel like joining in. Too much didn't make sense. It should be a quarter past three and I should be at the Louvre, but it's nighttime and we're seated at dinner. I couldn't solve that puzzle right now, so I turned my attention to my companions. Who are these men? I haven't been introduced to anybody. They were all from different countries. Was this an international meeting of some kind? They don't particularly seem to be friends. The gentleman from Paris, sitting at the head of the table, inclined his glass my way. Uh, okay. A la vôtre. Unable to refuse such a direct toast, I responded, looking in his eyes as I touched my glass to his. He finished his champagne, 
feeling guilty, I took a sip of mine. Girl, I ain't gonna feel no guilt. It tasted wonderful. Glorious, miraculous, what is going on? My stomach knew. I'd only eaten a quick breakfast this morning and I was hungry. It'd be insulting if I don't eat and everything looks so good. Girl, that's how they get you. I tried the terrine, pheasant with a fresh basil. It tasted as exquisite as it looked. Okay, that sounds delicious. My compliments to the chef. The biscuit's delicious too. You can take, ooh, it's a crab bisque. Okay, focus, Lauren. The biscuit's delicious too. You can taste the crab. It's thickened just right. He'll be pleased to hear that. The gentleman from Paris smiled at me and suddenly I was feeling my champagne. <laughs> How strong is this champagne? Okay. Maybe he's just a harmless nobleman and I'm taking all this too seriously. By all appearances, it was a perfectly pleasant evening. Wasn't this just the sort of romantic adventure I'd arrange for people? That was a wonderful first course. When the gentleman spoke, everyone stopped their quiet chatter and gave him their attention. Finally. Okay, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> Wasn't the comp to say, oh, I, I couldn't tell you. I thought he was like an explorer. The hedonistic nobleman, Comte de Saint Germain. Okay. Comte. So he's a count? That explains his old world air. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The pleasure's all mine, Comte. I stiffened, realizing belatedly I could have made a better impression of myself. The Comte de Saint Germain next turned to his servant, my hard working butler and the chef of tonight's excellent banquet, Sebastian. Nice to meet you too. The stoic? <laughs> I love how stoic's the question marks. Butler, Sebastian. Sebastian gave me a formal bow. The pleasure is mine. A butler named Sebastian? How typical is that? Except that I recognize your accent, Sebastian. It's the same as mine. Oh, so she's like, uh-huh. You're Japanese. I'm willing to bet Sebastian isn't your real name. Mind your business, girl. He might be fleeing something. We don't know. It occurs to me we haven't heard your name yet. I'd be pleased to know it. I guess there's no harm in that? I'm Lauren. Oh, thank you. The man with the angel's face sitting across from me was the first to reply. I like him. Uh, Van Gogh? The gentle angel, Vincent Van Gogh. It's nice to meet you, too. A painter named Vincent Van Gogh is the theme of tonight's banquet pseudonyms? <laughs> I love how, like, I already know. I'm like, okay, all these people are, like, famous figures. And she is like, nah, this must be pseudonyms. Like, if you've ever seen the Clue movie, you've got Miss Scarlet and Mrs. White. Like, they're all pseudonyms, so it's like, okay. But I smiled back. He seemed like a nice man. And this is my little brother. Go on, Theo. Introduce yourself. Vincent nodded at his brother. Theodorus Van Gogh. <laughs> Don't, confuse me. <laughs> Don't confuse me with Vincent. The enterprising devil, Theodorus Van Gogh. I'll do my best. Confuse you two? Not likely, although I would have pinned you for the older brother. Yeah, I would have too. Maybe it's his attitude, but Vincent doesn't strike me as the oldest child. Like him too. He's mean. <laughs> he opened a pocket watch and tapped the back. Tap, 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 as if to say, I've got things to do. What's his hurry? Goodness, is he the opposite of his brother or what? I looked to the next in line. Sitting to the right of Theodorus was Newt. I hadn't met Newt's eyes for a moment before he looked away from me again. Will you just look at me? I don't bite. If he could have curled up in a ball so small that he disappeared completely, I was certain he would have. <laughs> Newt is like, I'm not here for people. Stop it. Isaac. Isaac Newton. Nice to meet you. The wolf in sheep's clothing. Oh my god, these descriptions. Okay. Oh, so your name is Isaac? It's nice to meet you. Is he a student? Maybe Cambridge. He's got that South English accent. Okay, I would just like to say, like, is... <laughs> Okay, she's a traveler. 
That's why. I was like, was she like a linguist in school? Because she knows she can peg all these accents. I forgot. She's traveled a lot. Wait, should that be Sir Isaac? Just then I heard one of the windows rising. To my surprise, someone was coming in from outside. I didn't need to hear him to know he was Japanese. The man waved at us. Who comes in from the window? Also, very pretty. But who comes in from the window? He just about crossed the windowsill when his sleeve got caught. He pulled at it comically, ineffectually so. He's wearing an old Taisho style kimono in the middle of Paris? And he came through the window? Where do I start with him? God's truth, can't you use a door? <laughs> and keep everyone waiting? No, no, the window was much faster, of course. He smiled, hooked like a fish on the window, but looking as if nothing about that was strange. <laughs> I was still staring when he freed himself. His eyes fell on me. Oh, he's friendly too. It's good. Okay, can we address the fact he came through the window though? He nonchalantly took the seat next to Isaac, who immediately slid away from him. <laughs> you arrived just in time. We were just all introducing ourselves to our guest. You'd like me to introduce myself? <laughs> just a poor writer. Okay. The indulgent charlatan, Osamu Dazai. Okay, so <laughs> these descriptions are killing me. Charlatan. Osamu Dazai, the writer. Okay. Oh yes, I know you. I had to read you in my high school classical literature class. I rubbed my temples. How was my champagne glass doing? Empty. Don't drink nothing else. Now I feel bad. I should have introduced myself as Marie Antoinette or no, Queen Himiko? I looked back at the Van Gogh brothers. It was Vincent who had this who started this weird chain of nonsense names. Yet he had the most innocent smile. Who are these people? I mean, really. I get it now. This must be one of those reality segments they run on morning TV. <laughs> she is just like like she is grasping at answers here. Surprise! You travel back in time. They get actors, everyone sees how panicked the guests get, they laugh, but they need my written permission for that. Besides, why rent out such a grand mansion for a variety skit? And in Paris? That didn't make any sense at all. Now I regret it drinking the champagne. Had there been something in it? Never mind. Who's next? Surprise me. Skipping several empty chairs brought us to the coldly beautiful pianist. Wolfie, that's what the flirted called him. At the very least, this can't be a joke because this one would never play along. <laughs> okay, so now it's like, is this really real? The haughty musician, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Hello, Mozart. Of course the pianist calls himself Mozart. I would have accepted Beethoven, too. It was strange that the man who hated parties would join in on this silly game. Oh, and lest we forget the flirt. He's too enthusiastic. Okay. Uh, as long as you get to call- No, we don't know each other. Don't address me. The frivolous playboy. I love a good playboy character. Dang it. Arthur Conan Doyle. I wasn't going to grace that with an answer. Now I believe that he's capable of saying anything to anyone if he thought I could get his foot in the door. But would they all be lying to me? Yes. No, not lying. They're pseudonyms then. They have to be. They're sub celebrities or dignitaries and they're giving us me fake names to keep their real identity secret. Or something. I believe that leaves you. Lacombe's velvet voice arrested my fancies. The only man left, my protector. He wanted me to get out of here. He promised to answer my questions as soon as we were gone. For some reason, I'd instantly trusted him, more than anyone else here. Would he lie to me too? My dark-haired savior looked at me with those eyes that hid nothing and said, Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte. RUN! The charismatic ruler, Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay, <laughs> so at this point, I would be like, it's time for me to go. Because if y'all all got pseudonyms, which is what she thinks, 
this is some dangerous stuff to be a part of. Outside the mansion, where Lauren and the others sat at a table set for ten, okay, so we're in a different point of view, a lavish coach remains stopped just past the gate, the coachman tending to his horses. Okay, have I mentioned, like, how much I love this music? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, I've talked about it already, but I do. Um, <laughs> so, here we go. And the backgrounds are so pretty! Okay. The lavish coach remains stopped just past the gate, the coachman tending to his horses. He's pretty, and I'm loving his outfit. The man who, at times, was a king, a prince, a lover, but always a liar left the moonlight to re-enter the coach. But monsieur, what about the banquet? Capricious fate has invited a guest of fairer main than mine to take my chair. Hers is center stage tonight, though I shan't say to stay to see how she performs. Let us depart and on. He, very pretty, drawn to him. It's the hair, it's long. I'm a sucker for long hair characters, okay. The coach hurried off through the night, its passenger relaxing into a seat cushioned against the harness of the road, harshness of the road, reading. Quietly, he spoke to himself, a bard playing to an audience of none. And he's a fancy talker! Ah, oh, long hair, beautiful clothes, fancy talker. I love him already. The bard had seen Lauren for a moment, and yet, he found himself haunted by her. I want to marry him! <laughs> I'm just listening to his voice! Okay. Okay, we're gonna have the most torrid love affair. I feel it in my soul. The coach rocked as it hit a divot in the pad, sending the script in the bar's lap tumbling to the coach floor. Visible on the cover was a signature, scrawled in fresh ink, belonging to that of one William Shakespeare. The possessive playwright! Oh, he's a yandere character. You say possessive. Oh, God. Sebastian, if you would make us a cup of herbal tea, I think a niece would be. None for me, please. Get to the point. Where am I? What am I doing here? Dinner had ended with no answers. Lecomte invited me to his suite for an explanation, as promised. I have only one question. How do I get back? Does that door have a deadbolt? Where's the key? Is it your fingerprint? Whatever, I don't care, I just want it open. There you go, show some force. The door isn't locked. Opening it is easy, but it opens under very specific conditions. What conditions? The specifics are a bit hard to explain. Le Comte de Saint-Germain got up from his chair and stopped in front of an oversized hourglass. The top half was full of sand. What? What? I do not like how much sand is in there. I see. And approximately how long does that hourglass run for? What the f- Bruh. Bruh. You're really telling me I'm stuck here? Bruh. Okay. For a month? Bruh. A month on average? Did you say it takes a month? Bruh. It typically takes a month for all the sand to fall, doesn't it, Sebastian? Yes, Monsieur Le Comte. Meaning she will not be able to leave for another month, approximately. Well, they can forget that. She said, oh, hell no. No, we're in Paris, yes. I'll leave through the front door. How far are we from the Louvre? There's no need to fixate on that strange door. Why would I need it to get back? I don't know how it became night without my knowing, but I can return to my hotel and get back to work tomorrow. Le Comte de Saint Germain returned to his seat and picked up a newspaper folded on the table. I'd like you to look at the date. Le Petit Parisien? I look at the date. I didn't believe it, but the article, the feel of it, the news articles, it was too real. I grew cold. This is this morning's edition, as you've no doubt gathered from the date. Bro! <laughs> this is really the 19th century? On the cuffs of the turn of the century, if this date is correct, but how could that be? Saint Germain kept a calm, inexorable tone. At least one of us is calm. <laughs> Okay, 
この屋敷がでできた Traveling through time? You're kidding me. I don't understand. You look like you're struggling to believe it. What do you expect? I'd believe any number of explanations before I believe time travel. Fair. Me too. It's true that a newspaper can be easily faked. Maybe this will convince you. The Comte moved toward a window where an old fashioned brass telescope was set up. What an excellent idea, Monsieur Le Comte. Seeing is believing, they say. No one asked you, Sebastian. It is our good fortune that, owing to the genius of one of our guests, this telescope provides an excellent view of the city. I let them guide me to it and peered within. When my vision focused, I saw. It's all real. There were no neon signs, no skyscrapers. I counted one car but saw a hundred carriages. I'm seeing it, but I can't believe it. I turned to the telescope to someplace closer. Gentlemen in morning coats escorting ladies with bustles. Dressing up actors in a mansion was one thing, but you can't dress up an entire town. I was not in the 21st century. Yeah, once I saw no skyscrapers, I'd have been like, all right, bruh.、Uh, I'm gonna go to sleep until I wake up in the 21st century again, though. <laughs> Then I've traveled through time? There's a phrase you use in Japanese. Do you recall it, Sebastian? Time sleep, isn't it? Time slip. Okay, sorry, I had a red velvet moment. It's true. That's what we call it, but that doesn't matter right now. How do you come to terms with the impossible? That door connects to both the past and the present. You used it to travel here, to the past. You may have read or seen stories about time travel, but in my experience, it is neither a simple nor an everyday occurrence. It's not an any day occurrence, <laughs> right? Like, what are you talking about? Okay. Time travel has very particular rules. In this case, you cannot return for the next month. When all the sand in the hourglass falls? Yes, when that time comes, either you or I could open the door. But even I must follow the rules. It remains sealed to me for a month as well. He doesn't control it? If the door hadn't shut, you could have passed through it exactly the way you came. But once it's closed, that particular passage ceases to exist, and the door requires time before it can open again. You mean I could have walked back if the door hadn't closed? Well, that's great. How? I mean, like, how were they all drawn to the same door? So we all just happen to get stuck here at the same time? Bro, okay, suspension of disbelief. If what he's saying is true, then the men I met at dinner, could they be real? So many famous names, names from history, many known throughout the world. I can see you still have some doubts. But I assure you, you've met the real. I love how the, the music just stopped for dramatic effect. Okay, but I assure you, you've met the real Van Gogh, the real Mozart, and the real Napoleon. It's not unreasonable to assume that they're all real now that time travel isn't out of the question. And yet, it's unbelievable. And who are you, Comte, that you have collected some of the history's greatest figures to live here in your mansion? I looked at him over steepled fingers. This ineffable gentleman who could only. who only said that people call him the Comte de Saint Germain. I'm not trying to evade your question, but in truth, it's getting quite late. Okay, you lying bitch! You are evading my question. Are you kidding me? Please stay the night. Sebastian will prepare a room. I mean, I don't got nowhere else to go. In fact, you're welcome to stay here for the entire month. For the night, perhaps, but you do realize you can't return to your time for another month, don't you? Okay, but that don't mean I want to stay here. Yes, and I've come to terms with that. I'm an experienced traveler. I can make my own way. I've done it all my life. Sebastian fixed me with a severe look. I believe you'll find that difficult. This is France at the turn of the century. How do you intend to make your way? Of course, I don't know that yet, right? I can't use Google and my cell phone don't work. It was true. I didn't know much about this period. I didn't even know what currency they currently used. But I'm uneasy here, too. There's some danger here that no one is telling me about. I couldn't admit my suspicion outright. I don't want to impose. You're not imposing, I assure you. It's just that you're offering me so much and asking for nothing in return. Yep, just stay polite. And that scares me the most. If that's your concern, I've been thinking Sebastian could use a hand around the house. So you want me to clean shit? I realize what Lecomte was suggesting. Sebastian was listening without comment. Assisting Sebastian as a housekeeper, a job could mean mobility and security. 
Regardless, I had two choices now. Risk spending a month in a house full of supposed time travelers who most definitely haven't told me everything, or run for it and, being, and risk being penniless on the streets of a turn of the century France at night. I know which I would choose. I gave Lecomte my answer. I accept. I suppose that makes us co-workers, Sebastian, for now. It's the only option that guarantees me a place to sleep tonight. Whatever dangers may be here, the streets will be worse. That's true because you don't know your way around yet. Lecomte and Sebastian have already confided in me. I'll trust them, for now. Sebastian looked distinctly uninterested at the prospect of having my assistance. Okay. Okay, uh, I got the sense that he was strict when I met him, so I can work with that. Housekeeper may feel like a step down from my previous job, but I choose to view this as an extended vacation. I mean, what if people like, okay, what is time travel like in this world? If I'm missing, will people notice? Or like, when I come back, will it be like no time has passed? Like, I'll be back to work in a month and maybe I'll add a history section to my blog too. I had been lost and confused. Now the ground at my feet felt a little more stable. I'm pleased we've come to an agreement. I wasn't able to answer all your questions tonight, but we'll continue tomorrow. I also have something important to tell you, but that too can wait for morning. Why? If it's important, tell me now! I looked into those eyes. Those golden eyes I saw at the musée and strangely found myself content with that. She don't. I look forward to it, Comte. I will inform the others that you will be staying with us and are to be treated with courtesy. Two of them did not join us tonight, but I expect you'll have the opportunity to meet them soon. More famous names from history? Two more, you said. One is Shakespeare. Yes, one is Jeanne d'Arc. What? Okay, <laughs> it's supposed to be Joan of Arc, but we got Jeanne d'Arc. Joan of Arc is here too? The maid of Orléans who made the French, who led the French in the Hundred Years' War? That's a relief. I was afraid I'd be the only woman here. It's been nothing but men so far. A woman? Jean is a man, though. I can see... <laughs> Jean is a man, though. I can see how you'd make that mistake. Are we talking about the same person? As to that, truth and history have a curious way of becoming distorted in the telling. Suspension of disbelief. He heard voices others couldn't hear. Voices that guided him. Tonight. A new voice urged him to look out the window. An eye patch covered the left side of his face, almost hidden beneath his lank, dark hair. Jean d'Arc, pretty, okay, looked at the crescent moon and heard its laughter. His voice faded into the night. The moon's mocking laughter did not. <laughs> Damn, he's serious as hell. The beautiful heretic, Jean d'Arc. Besides Jean, there's one other who lives with us here in the mansion. The Comte was cut off by a dull thump, like something heavily falling against the door. That's probably him. I'm sorry to trouble you, Lauren, but could you get the door? Okay. I opened the door to find no one there. Is the last man invisible? <laughs> when I stepped into the hallway, I finally saw him. He was lying slumped against the wall. What's he doing there? Is he sleeping? Excuse me? I wondered how he could be comfortable sleeping like that. He cracked an eye open. Then he pulled me into his lap. The hell? I wasn't angry. I was in another world. A sweet smelling paradise of golden eyed angels with low lyrical voices. Okay, he's handsome. Okay, but why am I in his lap though? He wasn't letting go. I didn't want him to. I knew he'd ask me a question, but no answer came to mind. Mm -hmm. As if waking up from the dream I was still in, he realized what he'd done and let go of me. He chuckled warmly and murmured an apologetic scusa in a provincial Italian accent. Uh, yes! You did. <laughs> How was that rare? He helped me to my feet and I caught the pleasant aroma of tobacco lingering on his clothes. And here he is, the last of our residents. Hmm. He looks older than everyone else. Da Vinci! Da. Da Vinci! The ingenious deceiver. Oh god, deceiver. 
Leonardo da Vinci. この屋敷には俺とセバスチャン、そして九人の偉人たちが暮らしている。I'm excited. We're getting close to the choice. Leonardo ran a gloved hand through his hair. His voice was still heavy with that rough, sleepy quality. しかしまあとんでもない屋敷にしちまったな。Why do you say that? ここはあんたみたいな小娘にとって居心地のいい屋敷じゃねえってことだよ。Uh, run! I sank into bed in what was to be my room. Alone with Mouse Head and my thoughts, it was easy to imagine that this was a dream and I was back in my hotel. Okay, it's so beautiful in this room. If only it was a dream. I'm willing to believe I traveled back in time. But I cannot believe I had dinner with a bunch of time traveling artists and scientists and musicians and. I tried to recount everyone I'd met. Vincent van Gogh and his younger brother Theodorus. One paints masterpieces, the other sells them, so we got two. One is nice and the other, I'm not so sure of. He mean. They seem close though. Okay, the two authors, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who created Sherlock Holmes, and Osamu Desai, who wrote No Longer Human. The class flirt and the class clown, they both seem to want my attention. Was Sir Isaac Newton really that shy? He wouldn't look me in the eye. His outfit is very nice, okay. I can't even picture Jeanne d'Arc. I wonder what she, I mean, he really is like. Your words, they match the look on your face. That's rare. How did I lose myself around Leonardo da Vinci? Okay, I'm sensing major chemistry. And what exactly was he thinking? As if the banquet wasn't bad enough. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. His music was so lively and fun, but he, he seemed cold and empty inside. And of course, I can't forget. I'll answer your questions later. You need to escape before the others find you. Napoleon Bonaparte. He was trying to rescue me, I'm sure of it. From what? I couldn't picture all of them lying about who they were, and my instincts told me they were telling the truth. Besides, what would Lecompte and Sebastian gain from lying to me? I'm not rich or influential, there's no benefit to it. Then it's all real? As real as this place is? I slipped off my jacket, kicked off my shoes, and took out my earrings. Enough thinking. It's time for bed. I slipped under the covers and shut my eyes. Despite my internal clock still reading afternoon, I was somehow able to sleep. I woke to the soft crumple of a thick duvet, followed by the creak of the bed frame. Okay, this music is spooky? What is that? I froze. Someone else was in the room with me, and they were on the bed. No! Who is there? It isn't safe here after all. I roll out of bed and sprang to my feet. A pair of arms grabbed me from behind and pulled me back onto the bed with them. They were on top of me, holding me down. Stop! Strong hands pinned mine to the sheets. My legs were trapped under theirs. Oh no! Don't move. Their breath was on my ear and my body tensed. Sharp teeth sank into my neck! It stung only a moment. No, not even that long. What I felt couldn't be described as pain. I feel. So hot. I couldn't move my limbs. They weren't under my power anymore. Heat flickered across my vision like a desert mirage. Each warm breath billowing over my neck filled me with insatiable longing. Oh, God! Someone bit me? No liquor could have intoxicated me as quickly. Sheer pleasure spreading from my neck, traveling throughout my body. I groaned in a voice laden with ecstasy. Did this voice even belong to me? Oh, girl, no! Except I knew it did. Oh, I felt it to my very core, a slow throbbing pulse robbing me of reason. I have to snap out of it. My lashes fluttered, my eyes were rolling back. Suddenly, I caught sight of something. Someone had spilled rose petals on the bed's white sheets, but they weren't rose petals, and they had come from me. Girl, it's blood! Get out of here! That's blood, my blood. Before I let go of consciousness and slipped into the void, I heard a man's voice. I want it all your body, your heart, and your destiny. No, no, and no. No! I scrambled out of bed, clutching my neck. There was no puncture wound there, no blood. I spun, looking around the room. Empty, no trace of the man who'd bitten me. There's no one here. I've never had such a real dream. No, that's not true. When I first arrived at the mansion, that dream felt just as real. My fingers were cold. I was shaking, and my throat was painfully dry. I should get some water. Retracing my steps from dinner, I found the kitchen. It was lit with electric lamps. Sebastian was up, washing dishes. After that nightmare, I sighed in relief to see him. 
Uh, yeah. What, where do I start though? Uh, first of all, I've uh, found history's like greatest figures. Um, time slip, month that I'm stuck here, dreams about being bitten in the neck. <laughs> yes, could I have some water please? Sebastian poured me a glass and he listened patiently as I told him about the waking dream or vision I had when I arrived. And I had another dream just now. Tell me about the dream. I told him about the man in my room how he held me down and bitten my neck, just like a vampire would. Talking about it helped. In fact, I was laughing as I finished the story. Girl, that's not funny. Dreams can be so realistic, even when they're about the most unbelievable things. Sebastian was quiet now, and I wondered if he was tired of me prattling on. Thanks for listening to my silly dream. I hope you don't think I'm crazy for dreaming about vampires. I don't think you're crazy, nor do I believe it was just a silly dream. You don't think it was silly? No, indeed, it's a good sign. I felt a pang of unease. My bad dream is a good sign? Okay, you're not making sense. Okay, who? Then? Go ahead, drop the bomb. Oh, hell no! And that is the prologue. Oh my gosh. This is going to be absolutely amazing. So I don't think all the routes are out. So let's actually look and see in our character selection. So here's the available routes. Napoleon, Mozart, Leonardo da Vinci, Arthur Conan Doyle, Vincent, Theodorus, Isaac Newton, Jean d'Arc. Okay. Ah, oh, Shakespeare's not available yet. I'm gonna die. Okay. I don't know who to pick, you guys. I don't know. Okay, there's so many choices. I'm thinking about going with da Vinci first. Cause I was like the most drawn to him actually and like the chemistry that okay but Theodorus he's mean I like mean and then okay <sighs> ah! okay I don't know I don't know I'm gonna go with Da Vinci okay I'm gonna go with Da Vinci I'm, I'm feeling it we're going with Da Vinci when I feel frightened by this world Leonardo Da Vinci the quintessential Renaissance man was there to guide me he was pushy and demanding or so I thought but his true kindness quickly came to the surface. In time, so did his secret. Even if tomorrow your love for me fades, I will continue to love you for all eternity. Never let go, and I won't ever escape your sweet embrace. Though God should try to divide us. Oh God, this looks like it's gonna be hella romantic and hella torturous. So we have a romantic end and a dramatic end. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm gonna pick Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, I'm gonna think about it though. <laughs> before we do episode two of this starting um, on a route. I, I want to think because I'm torn between Leonardo da Vinci and I'm also like looking at Theodorus and uh, Mozart. So I'll make a final decision um, when we start our next episode. So that's it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Be happy, be healthy, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!